dudes, so don't try to run your mouth at the king. Just pucker up, bitch, and go kiss the ring. L to the OG, do me the OG, A and E playing. <laughs> Hey, uh, Ivan. Yeah. Are you are you okay? Yeah. Why Why do you ask? Because uh, on May twenty sixth, twenty twenty three, four thirty eight p.m., you posted a tweet saying, "Is something awful a cool place to go? Do I have to pay money to post?" I want you to think about that long and hard I, I really want you to reflect on that what is there to think about it's just like in 2023 you posted is something awful a cool place to go why yeah. would you post that i mean most social media has gotten kind of boring you know Shut the fuck up do you feel any fucking shame in what you fucking post Look, I don't know the history of something awful. All I know is that it's like a forum. And then, and then when someone someone replied, it died years ago. You, you replied, "It's still buzzing." From what I heard, it's still buzzing. Why yeah. Why would you post that? Because I was bored of Twitter. Do you think that that? Don't you think that like hurts our brand? <laughs> how does it hurt our brand talking positively about something awful forums the dorkiest cringiest stinkiest forum stinkiest can't you just smell the hot dog water from all the fucking like deodorant lists fucking man children on there do you really want us to be associated with something awful forums? I'm honestly a little insulted. And honestly, I'm considering getting a new co-host. Honestly, uh, I have no clue about any of the history of something awful. Uh, isn't it owned by that guy? Uh, what's his name? Fucking stinky McFart fart. Yeah, it is stinky McFart fart. You know, I thought the uh, I thought the worst forum in the world was Reddit. Something awful forums, even redditors, slam something awful members into lockers. They are the lowest of the low, my friend. They are the lowest on the social ladder. They are far from the elites of this high school known as the internet. They are nowhere near the mean girls. Oh yeah, was it social suicide? Yeah, it is social suicide to associate yourself with something awful forums. I, I don't know what to say about that, to be Fucking honest. Fucking apologize. You... Fucking apologize to me in the audience. All right. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Dear Zoomer Tombstone viewers and Synthcool, Thank also you. known as uh, Tumors, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for saying anything at all about the something awful forums on twitter.com in the year of our lord 2023 okay may god well, forgive my soul and may um i don't know fucking low tax get shot amen all right uh can we roll in exhibit b for the the jury of your other crime which is uh oh yeah just like 10 minutes ago you kept me waiting because you were eating dr peppered flavored beans <laughs> yeah so my friend uh he gifted me some food items and one of them uh i was really hungry just now and so i was like okay fuck it i'm just gonna make some like beans and weenies in a bowl i'm just gonna fucking <laughs> horse that shit down because I, I i i'm hungry one of the cans of beans he got me was just a regular like blue label heinz can of beans right you know normal shit 
one of the other one was some like random brand like sweet and sassy shit and it was a a cross promotion with dr pepper and it was uh it was flavored with uh what they called over the over 23 flavors of dr pepper i didn't even know they had 23 flavors but when i ate it it was like really weird your anus is going to be torn up you know that i mean i'm not gonna lie uh if my anus were a, a mean girl in a clique in high school, uh, it would be shoved in a locker daily. <laughs> That's not a sentence you hear too often. <laughs> Welcome to the Zoomer Tombstone podcast. This episode, we're talking about mean girls. Yeah. And that whole movie. Uh, um, why the fuck did we pick this movie? Like, what what is there even to say besides it's like a good movie? Like, like there's the Succession final yesterday. <laughs> we're, we're talking about fucking a two thousands Lindsay Lohan movie. All right, you know what? You know what? Let, let's talk about let, let's talk about Succession a little bit. All right, all right. All right. Uh, I thought uh, okay. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler for all of, alert. for all of our tumors out there. Yeah. Um, so, so all of our tomb heads. Ah, don't Be spoil care. it for me. I was too busy watching the Flash final. <laughs> don't spoil it for me. I watched Barry instead. I still need to watch Succession. Ah, oh. please. <laughs> but no. Uh, so I thought the ending of Succession was kind of underwhelming. Why? Because they just kind of pulled the rug out from underneath uh, everything that was being set up. Uh, all for like a whoa! You can't be the guy you killed someone. Well, I mean, isn't the whole point of the ending is like how he practically had like his legacy like took and taken away from him, and it's supposed to be kind of like like Succession's not really an optimistic show. It's well, yeah. I mean, it's I can get that, but. I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was kind of funny when he was uh, screaming, I'm the eldest boy! I'm the eldest boy! Like, he was having a full fucking tantrum. Shit was fucking funny. Do you think they talk to each other anymore after that? Do you think they just, um, like, stop talking forever? I don't know. Maybe we'll get our spinoff show with the uh, Disgusting Brothers, Tom and Greg. Honestly, I, I could kind of see that happening, because uh, Succession was like a money printer for HBO. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they made, like, a sequel series. Yeah, dude, give Hugo his own spinoff. God. Hugo <laughs> was a chat. I, I was hoping Hugo was going to sweep. I, I was hoping Hugo would have been CEO. Did you catch the line about the uh, about how he's going to get fired? Yeah, and I, I fucking cried for, like, literally hours. I'm literally shaking that my Hugo is <laughs> going to get canned. Honestly, I, I was a uh, I was a really big Kendall head uh, through, from the start of the series. Uh, I, I thought he had it in the bag, and then uh, of course his bitch sister had to ruin it all by being a woman. Shit is worse than Walter White's wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, Kendall deserved it. I mean, like you know, Shiv begged Kendall to not like make a Nazi president. Mm -hmm. and then he he did so it's like fuck it maybe kendall deserves to get fucked over that's a fair point yeah. uh kendall and roman were both pretty shitty uh in regards to their actual like impact on the world uh it's just kendall didn't really realize it and uh and it seems that uh roman just kind of didn't give a fuck yeah dude roman uh, roman realized oh wait i'm rich i don't need to be in this like power dynamic i could actually like spend my wealth like like yeah. honestly connor as fucking stupid as connor is he's actually the most logical character on the show because it's like i well I i'm fucking richer than god why do i care about any of this yeah i mean he's just living life he doesn't give a flying shit he, he just you know he's like yeah i'm gonna go fucking like play politics for a bit maybe uh, go to like Croatia or some shit just for the fuck of it. Uh, you know he was like talking about like setting up like bunkers in places just because it's just because he can. Yeah, you know, like pretty... all all these people are gonna be rich forever no matter what. It doesn't matter if they own the like this world's equivalent of Fox News or not. It's just 
They're just fighting over daddy's scraps. It's I, I, I guess it's more like a psychological thing where it's like, you know, like, how does it look if I don't inherit my father's legacy? How does it look on me? Do, do Will people like think less of me? And I guess that that is sort of Kendall's whole arc. And uh, it just gets gets uh, slashed away from him. And in a way, it's uh, kind of satisfying. You know, Kendall, Kendall wasn't the worst human on the show. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like maybe he, he he needs tough fucking love. He needs to get his legacy stolen from him, you know? Dude needs a hard reset. Yeah, dude. Dude, dude needs to fucking be a dad instead of fucking, uh, you know, sucking his dad off in, while he's dead. Sucking his dad's zombie dick and electing fascist to president using his news company. Yeah, dude. And, and you, you know, honestly, I, I, I was like watching some video or looking at a picture of like Russian of, of some like Russian rally and all the Russians are like holding pictures of their dads. And I'm like, aren't you guys like em- embarrassed? Like even Putin was there leading it. And it's like, I, I don't like guys who have that like me and daddy energy. I don't like guys who talk <laughs> about their dads all the time. It's un quite frankly, it's a little embarrassing. I mean, I can kind of get that to be honest with you, because, uh, I mean, I can, you know, I can say, you know, for myself that I've had quite a few quote unquote daddy issues in the past, uh, as my dad has passed away recently, there, there's some Ivan lore. Um, and, uh, I never got the whole, like, you know, revering the father figure and like trying to seek approval from them, you know, cause it, it's like, once you reach 18, you're your own dude, you know, you can do whatever the fuck you want. I guess it depends, though, because some people grew up in that really kind of tight-knit type of family where they were always really dependent on their parents. So uh, I guess there's, like, kind of that ingrained, like, you know, approval-seeking behavior. But that just becomes attention-seeking behavior in the long run. I mean, like, uh, there's nothing wrong with, like, honoring or respecting your father. It's just, like, if you're, like, 40 years old and, like... (laughs) <laughs> you you have all this money and you practically have your own life, but you're you 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 center it all am- among like your dad. It's just a little whack. It is pretty whack. <laughs> it's it it gets to a point where it's like you got to start you know playing your own playing your own tune, you know. And I think in uh, Succession you can see that the 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 best character that does that is definitely Logan, or not Logan. Sorry, uh, what's his name? Connor, he, he just sits around his uh, around his siblings, and they're all just like, "What angle do we have? How are we gonna get into this? How, how are we gonna like fuck each other over?" And they just snake each other constantly, and then he's just sitting there sipping uh, sipping like mimosas, wearing sunglasses, and just going like, "Yeah, so I got like zero point five percent of the vote. It's going pretty good." Anyways, uh, succession talk over. It's no, 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 no. We got to work out the spinoff angle. Um, with uh, okay, so uh, Tom and Greg are the main characters in this uh disgusting brothers spinoff. Yeah, sure. Um, I I like Carolina. Um. Let's keep Jerry in there. Uh, let's have Carl and Frank in there. Let's keep it like, you know, let's, let's have it like a fun show. Carl and Frank are like first on the chopping block. Now, nah, dude, you can't get rid of Carl and Frank. They'll they'll, they'll, they'll they'll find a way. I don't think they'd find a way. Yeah, I, I mean, think they, they will. They were pretty fun characters, though. Like, you remember the, uh, I don't know if you know this, but like, you, you remember those like puppets? Uh, like, Family Guy made a reference of them. Where, like, these two old guy puppets that just go like... <laughs> yeah, that's you know, that those are that, the muppets yeah that's carl and frank that's that's both of them that's they're like those guys but <clears throat> yeah i mean I, I don't know i think succession might get a sequel i, I really don't think it will though uh i feel like after this uh adam mckay and the other guys are just gonna move on make Step Brothers two or something <laughs> Ooh, maybe maybe it'll be a, a don't look up three so extreme it skipped the second one damn dude all right well anyways uh going on to uh, the actual movie that we reviewed which is or uh watched together uh mean girls how do you think carl and frank would would have been in mean girls 
Uh, they definitely would have been um, mathletes. Mathletes, okay. Yeah. So who who would have been in the plastics? Uh, probably Shiv. Nah, dude, Shiv is not a plastic. I mean, she's got the attitude. You never know. Nah, dude, Tom would have been a plastic. No, no, Tom's a jock. Tom would have been too gay to function. No, nah, he's a football player. Greg is too gay to function. <laughs> no, dude, Tom is way gayer than Greg. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. Greg is extremely, extremely homosexual. You can tell by dude, his awkward Redditor attitude. Tom, what? Tom, what kind of homophobia are you trying to pull, dude? Tom is way gayer than Greg. Nah, dude, Tom is like a fucking, like... I mean, for one, he, he's built like fucking, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Peyton Manning. <laughs> and for two, he's yeah, from Peyton, like the Midwest. Peyton Manning plays football. Football is the most homoerotic sport there is. I take exception to that. Oh. I'm, a, I'm a football veteran. I I did three <laughs> tours in the did three tours in the field. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, you know, a little Ivan Lore is uh, he's best friends with uh, famous world national superstar Joe Burrow. I don't know why you keep phrasing it like I'm best friends with him. I, I knew him, and he he probably knows my name. He probably remembers me from high school, but he, he we're not friends at least as far as. Like, we're chummy with each other. Man, you honestly suck because you could have gotten into his posse, bro. What you posse? Could, you could have gotten, gotten into Joe Burrow's, like, you know, posse, his uh, click. You know, you could have, like, shilled the podcast on the Super Bowl. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm a lame ass. So, unfortunately, <laughs> I uh, I don't fraternize with celebrities. They, they kind of slip out of my reach. Oh, damn, dude. I'm sorry to hear yeah, that means uh, that means you've got to go technically because you're a C-list celebrity. Um. Anyway, are we going back to Succession or Mean Girls? Uh, Jesus, I don't know. Uh, should we do Mean Girls at this point? We've been imagine, talking, uh, dude. Imagine our the guy, the one guy who really wanted to hear us review like Mean Girls. He's so <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> He's so fucking mad. Oh god, the worst part about it is that this is a uh, is this a free episode or a paid episode? I forgot. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a free episode. Yeah, so the worst part about it is that they're gonna have like three pre roll ads on Spotify and then three post roll ads on Spotify after the show's over. Oh damn. And, and they're gonna sit through six advertisements and they're just gonna be like, What the fuck? The what was this? What the fuck? <laughs> so it, <laughs> can they skip those ads? I don't know. Uh we just unlocked ads on okay, spotify yeah. so i have no clue we're selling out bitch yeah we're selling out i hope yeah. you get i hope you get all kinds of ads from mcdonald's raytheon fucking <laughs> the air force <laughs> yeah dude um dude i i hope you're able to skip these ads and then when you're like driving from like uh, McDonald's and you're eating the fries as you're driving but you gotta like skip the ads that like you you fucking skip the ads but you also cause like a major car pile up <laughs> <laughs> you're just sitting there in your fucking like uh, in your Ford Focus and you're just like pawing at your phone trying to be like ah oh, fuck skip ad skip ad skip ad drop your fries everywhere you drop <laughs> your milkshake on your lap you're panicking you turn the steering wheel you hit the brake your car turns screeches to a halt gets side uh, hit from the side by an, uh, a very large truck you spin 13 times down the highway enter a ditch go into a gully after that point you're knocked the fuck out you're unconscious oil is leaking into the cabin of the vehicle uh you're hanging by your seatbelt upside down choking slightly and by the time you wake up the advertisements are over and you get to hear us talk about succession <coughs> <laughs> and then when the fucking like emt or the police like check your phone yeah it's just like zoomer tombstone mean girls and everyone remembers you as a homosexual <laughs> <laughs> just um, imagine that in an obituary right like you die on the road and it's like the last thing he ever listened to was a podcast about mean girls <laughs> and it was mostly spent talking about succession 
May he rest in the ground forever. Amen. Let's actually talk about Mean Girls, though. We were check, here. Please. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, erm. Uh. Check, please. Um. Comedy moment. All right. Did you write any notes? Yeah. 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 So. Uh. I, I wrote. I. I didn't write very many notes. Mostly just quotes that I thought were kind of cool. Um. However, I, I will. I, I do <laughs> want to talk about one thing. I do want to talk about one thing. What? Tina Fey. Oh yeah. All right, Tina Fey. A little TNA. What about Tina Fey makes people so fucking horny? She was the teacher in this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. What What is it about women that look like Sarah Palin that make people just go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show wing? I mean, were you horny for Tina Fey in this movie? Not really, not my type. But... I mean, I, all I ever hear when I hear about anything about Tina Fey is just, oh my god, oh, MILF, MILF, MILF. Um, is this, like, a thing because, like, most of, you, most of you fucking Ohio hicks have, like, 97 Windows tier, like, internet, and <laughs> so you get your rocks off to SNL? No, no, th- this is a real thing. This isn't just an, uh, a localized Ohio uh, bumfuck shitville thing. Uh, this is a, a thing that you can look up very much on the internet. Just, just, just type in Tina Fey MILF. You know, just, just, just take that plunge. I mean, <laughs> just take the plunge. Sarah Palin is hot. I think we can agree on that. See, there we go. That's a fucking. That's the example. It right here. It's happening right here. It's like an infection. As soon as people think of Tina Fey, they think, oh, Sarah Palin's kind of hot. MILF. Then they think, oh, but Tina Fey is also kind of a MILF. MILF. It just, ah, oh, God, I hate the fucking, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, Sarah Palin, she's not, like, hot, hot, but she's pretty, like, yeah, I, I, I bang her kind of way, you know? Not not, not, not to degrade in uh, a, a smart woman of politics like Sarah Palin. But, oh, yeah, yes, the cute. smartest. Yeah, you know, Sarah Palin did fuck, like, the GOP's, like, chance in 2008, so. Yeah, she she's really the uh, the precursor to Marjorie Taylor Greene in a lot of ways. Except uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene looks like a foot, and Sarah Palin looks like an alcoholic mother. So you know, it just it, we kind of downgraded a little bit. Why the fuck did John McCain pick Sarah Palin? Like that literally destroyed your entire chance. It's really honestly hard to say. Yeah, it's like, dude was like, maybe the guy just didn't want to be president. So he's like, let me get the craziest fucking candidate ever. Hard to say. I was seven years old at the time. <laughs> I didn't really keep much of a uh, 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 tabs on what John McCain's strategy was. Oh, what? You, you were a seven year old who supported Barack Hussein Obama, you little seven year old Democrat liberal communist, huh? <laughs> I'll fucking pick your seven year old commie ass. Okay, here's another fun uh, meatball lore moment, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, my mom was an ardent Hillary supporter, right? And, like 2007 Hillary supporter, uh, which is like conservative Hillary, right? Uh, my dad decided to prank my mom by voting for Obama. And <laughs> she was so angry about that because she was like, just she just wanted a woman president so bad that she she was fuck, she like started a fight with him about that she was like my god i can't believe you fucking voted for him you fucking traitor <laughs> you Did know your mom say the n-word uh i don't know i was seven. <laughs> what i don't know i was seven you're supposed to say no she didn't well i mean she's been dead for like 15 years so whatever oh but i mean i don't know uh love my mom bless her heart uh but she was a bit fiery at times when it came down to uh, to old Hill Dog. Yeah, Hill Dog, you know. Um, was just because she wanted a woman. That's it. That, that was her main reason. What? Just so what? So what if the president's a woman? I'll still tell the president to make me a sandwich. <laughs> am I am I right, my fellow men? Uh, zing! But um, mm-hmm. tss, check please. Can you guys talk about Mean Girls already? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm here for a Mean Girls review, and you guys are just mean guys. Sue us. Yeah, sue us. 
bitch. Yeah, bitch, take us to court. Um, Damn, someone could probably take us to court for like false advertising. We're not false advertising. The, the, this uh, this podcast has so far been at least two percent about Mean Girls. Okay. Okay. Uh, so speaking of, I love the scene where she tried to greet the black girls in the uh, the cafeteria by like speaking like Zulu at them. That that's that that cringe, right? Cringe as fuck. <laughs> that that made me kind of wither inside a little bit seeing what? that. Did you pause and then like pace around <laughs> the room? <laughs> no, I just thought it was a little cringe. Um, let's see. Uh, when the Indian kid goes like, "Hey, Africa," you know, when he calls Lindsay Lohan Africa, mm. yeah, that that Indian kid was the funniest part of the movie. Dude, that Indian kid. Uh, I, I wrote a note uh, and said the Indian mathlete guy was the real hero of the film because yeah. that dude was always just sliding in, just being like, "Hey, yo, girl, what's up, baby girl?" Yo, yeah, that that was like the most alpha character ever. Yeah, I mean, he's a nerd and he can rap and. He's down with it. He, he can slide into those DMs, if you know what I mean. Yeah, dude. This was when Indian men in movies were allowed to be, like, cool and not just Raj from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> you know? So, uh, going going on to, like, the idea of, like, cliques in this movie. Because uh, in this movie, the in the plot, the idea of, uh, of people being in cliques in high school is a very integral piece of it. Did, when you went to high school, did you ever have like defined cliques like that where they were just like, "Oh, those are the jacks"? Because um, no, well, honestly, we I I never did. Yeah. and uh, I I always thought the idea of that in like high school movies is like a really dumb cliche. Uh, although I guess I never really understood because I never really stuck to one group in school, so I could never really have that sort of clique experience. But I don't think it just. I don't think it happens anymore. Well, I, I mean, the people who wrote and made these movies like grew up in like the seventies and eighties, and I'm it was like a much more monolithic culture. So I'm I'm sure there was some like real like jock and nerd and whatever sort of things there. But I mean, like twenty first century America, it's like practically, it, it, it's like there there is no monolithic culture. Yeah, it's kind of uh, diversified a bit, which is a good thing because. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a d- bunch of dumb fucking chuds in the comments and be like, uh, oh, diversity sucks. I wish we were all white people that lived in suburbia and ate fucking hot dogs out of a can or a red bean, <laughs> red bean, like Dr. Pepper. Yeah, uh, yeah, truly. I'm I'm living the height of 70s yeah. suburban suburban luxury. Yeah, dude, we need got, to return to tradition. Got my TV dinner, got my cans without labels, gonna fucking. You rip that shit open and eat it. Oh yeah, not even gonna cook it. I'm gonna <laughs> microwave my Tupperware and give my kids fucking microplastics. You fucking hick. Hell yeah. I mean, what's what's hicky? What's like a hick thing now? It was like the peak of luxury in the seventies. I think this is why clicks are kind of dead because a lot of like people. Like, because like back then when you were in in a, in a clique, it was just kind of natural. You didn't really think about it. Yeah. Whereas I feel like a lot of times uh, in, in in the twenty first century America or whatever, you feel obligated to force it. Like n- n- you were like you're not just a nerd. Like nerds in the eighties didn't think they were nerds. Whereas quote unquote nerds now, it's like they 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 want to to be nerds or they they talk about how nerdy they are. They want to live up to the legacy of the prior idea of a clique uh, yeah. because they romanticize it in a way nowadays you know that's you, that's what you get you get people being like oh yeah i'm such a nerd i'm such a jock because i'm you know doing stuff that's characteristic of that but it's like that doesn't that doesn't even exist anymore well it's just it's every fucking subculture like um like in the 70s and 80s or 90s that there were like actual real fucking bikers and shit whereas like now it's like rich like dentists like larping to be yeah bikers, to be like bikers support law enforcement or whatever or yeah fucking like look at like a, a lot of like because there's actual rednecks like you who fucking <laughs> eat like dr pepper beans in their fucking like trailer park but um, there's like this like new genre of like quote unquote rednecks of like rich college kids who like <laughs> I who like look like Matt Walsh who like ironically like go to like NASCAR races 
and like drink beer and go to, go to like pay eighty dollars for like a country music festival. Yeah, they're like the uh, they're like the metrosexual hipster uh, country people that are just like, yeah, I got a big lifted truck, but I also live in a gated community. Hell yeah, yeah brother! Like, so it's like people want to live up to, to the legacy of like the subcultures of like twenty or thirty years ago, but they just. It, it, it the game's completely changed you know yeah i mean back then a lot of that societal pressure was put on externally uh from people judging other people into different categories nowadays people are so devoid of uh of identity that they want to fit themselves into one of these categories they want to be the biker they want to be the nerd they want to be the jock they want to be the fucking whatever back then nobody wanted to be what they were they were assigned that yeah, and a lot of it was like, um, you know, economic or whatever, you know, like rich people were yeah. fucking into punk rock back then, whereas now it's like, well, fucking rich kids want to be punk rock. Yeah, and uh, a lot of that same like kind of click formation uh, is kind of similar to a lot of how, uh, how gangs work, because it's just they form naturally based on interests and they kind of act as a self-defense scheme because... Frankly, I think back in the 70s and, you know, on to the 80s and 90s and a little bit into the 2000s, uh, you had people uh, basically bullying each other constantly and being very vicious to each other. So they kind of grouped up for protection. And that's kind of the point of that. You know, people uh, subconsciously realize that when they move together in packs, they're stronger. And, uh, you know, so like a bully is a bit less... Um, like any kind of bully, uh, like a, like let's say a jock bully goes to bully a nerd, you know, typical classic like trope, right? If the nerd hangs out in a big group of nerds, that one single bully jock guy is way less likely to go and harass that one kid. But it's like, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of those uh, like cultural things have kind of withered away. And uh, that's like the one thing that underpins this entire movie is kind of how dated the concept of a clique is. Even by 2004 standards. I mean, no one remembers Mean Girls for, like, the plot or whatever. They they remember it because it's a funny fucking movie. It, it's yeah, I mean... Cool. It's entertaining. It has good performances. That's what people take away from this movie. I mean, a lot of the... It's a very quotable movie. That's, like, the one thing that I kind of... Uh, came out of this movie realizing is how many things that we quote from it on a on a not day-to-day -day basis but just on a kind of every once in a while basis you know like uh like boo you whore or the slut rule or it's like i have espn or something yeah we call each other like whores and sluts all the time me and ivan yeah uh if you're gonna drink i'd rather you do it in the house you know just a lot of uh, a lot of stuff like that Although, uh, something that kind of uh, reminded me a whole lot that this was like a 2000s movie set in the 2000s was the fact that, like, all the, like, plastic girls just said the word retarded an awful lot. They're just like, oh, that's retarded. You know, it's like, that that was really common back then. And nowadays, it's, like, kind of seen as weird. Uh, where do you stand on the word retarded? Do you think that's um, uh, something we should stop saying? I mean, sometimes when I'm, like like very heated up and someone's like really pissing me off i mean there there is like a 10 percent chance i might say the r word um i mean i i, I know I've, I've said it like so many times in my youtube videos probably you know, just because i think vulgarity could like be interpreted as passion mm -hmm. sometimes but um you know it's kind of one of those words like i try not to say but i'm not like a purist about it right yeah i mean like if someone like like says like hey could you not say the r word i i would listen but if someone was like really being a douchebag to me i probably there might be a chance i might say it's nothing i, I like i'm not gonna like swear i'll never say the r word again but i i right. just don't think it's a pleasant word when i'm kind of in like a chill relaxed manner like like now all right all right quick question for the audience which is a harsher word retard or cunt Dude, definitely, like, the R word, cunt is, like, cunt could be applied to men and women, mm -hmm. you know, whereas R word is always going to be associated with special needs people, in a way. Right. Like, cunt 
like you know it's like cunt it's just like i don't know like fucking like matt walsh is a cunt you know it doesn't have to be like exclusively to woman i've heard a lot of women say in in, in the past that uh whenever they hear the word cunt they get like like just angry instantly they just really don't like the word cunt I mean, okay, okay, okay. If, let, let's say if what if they have like an aggressive boyfriend who's like, "You fucking stupid cut," I'm like, okay, then they have a reason to feel that way, right? It, but I mean, just the word itself, I like cut. It's like, oh man, what a fucking cut. It's just like, eh, I, 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 I just don't see too much of a deal unless you make it so personal, right? Um, so going into the uh, kind of some of the aesthetics of this movie, um. I always thought the mom was super creepy, but like in the parts where like the uh, they're at the mom's house, like the the plastic girl's mom, uh, that whole place is just like peak like, you know, mid two thousands kitsch, you know, like pre housing crisis, you know, uh, decor. We have to return. We have to return to tradition. We have to get a big bed in a very <clears throat> very large mcmansion right a, a very big bed in a very big large mcmansion have velvet drapes around the bed and write princess in big bubbly letters above the bed oh and, i'm i'm sorry that you were too broke to not have princess all over your room uh unfortunately uh i, I my heyday was after the recession uh, so um did you have princess written no, unfortunately not. I had a uh, I had cunt written, oh. not princess. <laughs> <laughs> cunt written in like sharpie. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I haven't really got a whole lot to say. I wrote initially. Okay, there's there's one funny thing about the the notes I wrote for this movie though. Uh, initially, I wrote the the coach is a Chad. And then once it came out that he was, like, a pedophile who was, like, screwing the two, like, young Asian girls, I, I had to, like, delete that. Why did you say the coach was a chat? Because he was a fucking retard. He was just like, all right, kids, if you kiss each other, you'll die. Grab some condoms. <laughs> Base groiper. Yeah, based groiper gym teacher. Yeah. Well, especially uh, groiper since he's uh, a pedophile. You know... Just, yeah. Typical Nick Fuentes fan in 2004. How could Groypers be pedophiles if most of them are like 14 years old? I think you answered your own question. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Dude, whoa. Dude. What? I thought the ending of this movie where they were like, let's all share the, the prom whatever bullshit. I thought that was kind of stupid. Man, you just have like no imagination. I thought it was touching. I I I really liked this movie. I thought I thought it was uh, cute. You know? <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's all. All you can really say about it, though, because uh, there's not much else to say. I mean, it, it was fun at times. It was funny, but it wasn't what? really. It wasn't like a super egregious, like dated, super duper two thousands y movie. Uh, at least in my opinion, it just it's kind of goofy. It kind of sits in its own sphere. Who suggested this movie? I forgot. I don't know if it was you or me. Probably you. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I, it was something uh, 2000s-y, and I think that's kind of why I went for it. Um, the the fucking uh, that like regular jock character, I I thought was like you know you could have get made him more funny, you know. Right. <clears throat> I thought it was kind of funny how they made the gay guy like really normal. The gay guy was so was really funny in this movie. Yeah, I mean he was funny, but he was just like a normal dude. Like he didn't come off as like with like the gay lisp or anything. He was yeah. just like, 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 hey, how's it going? Give me back my shirt when you're done with it. You know, yeah. Just see that that that's actually really good for like 2000 standards because at this time every gay character was like, um, is this a soy latte? <laughs> <laughs> right. Every character back then was just a, a big old, like, puffed up big gay owl. Just like, hi guys, let's go shopping. Goo goo ga ga. <laughs> oh, does my butt look big in these jeans? Yeah. Yeah, it's just shit like that. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, shit. What, what else? What else is there to really say about this movie? I mean, there really isn't much, right? Um, well, I don't know. You got any any more notes? Uh, my last note is uh, or my last couple notes are that the bus hit gag is pretty funny. It was really fucking funny. Yeah, it, it caught me off guard when the uh, like little like young uh plastics got hit by the bus. Yeah, I was fucking base. Take that, Feloid. <laughs> Yeah, take that, 14-year-old girls. Get hit by a bus more often, bitch. <laughs> Some, like, 28-year-old guy with, like, a Nobu <laughs> profile pic is like, these, gir- these modern-day girls are roasties and sluts. Take that. Oh, God. They, like, graduated in, like, 2012. And they're just like, yeah, I know every- I know exactly how these bitches are like from 2004. <laughs> I was there. I hope these roasties get hit by a fucking truck next time. I mean, it was a funny ass gag. <laughs> it was a pretty funny gag. Uh, and then aside from that, I have that this is a very 2000s movie. Wow. Wow. That's and, such profound note taking. Yeah, I know. What I meant by that, though, was that the uh, like the ending soundtrack there at the at the very end of the movie, that was some like rip straight out of fucking like, you know, just that kind of like art style of uh, like trance music and like just everything in the two thousands had such like a techno y kind of futuristic vibe to the music and kind of the culture. But like nowadays, like we look back on a lot of that stuff and it's just so old and kitschy, you know, it's like, uh, it's like how people in the nineties looked at the seventies, but there's a lot of like stuff there. That's like really cool and futuristic. And that very final song that played like right before the credits rolled at the end of the movie, uh was just like whoa like this is some shit that like artists nowadays are trying to recreate because it's like cool like, sounding like what machine gun kelly no well, no I mean, machine gun kelly wants it to be 2004 or something no less machine gun kelly more machine girl yeah dude that that was like early 2000s mid 2000s was like skater boy or something Early to or mid two thousands, like mid to late two thousands, was a lot of like those uh, like garage band revival, like yeah, like the the college folks, like college cock rock, which uh, by twenty twelve all became like weird folk bands, <laughs> like hipster folk. Fucking like uh, like yeah, rock and roll had like one chance <laughs> to be cool again before fucking like ukuleles like ruined it all. Yeah, and it was all overtaken by the like very corporate like post grunge era of just like you know dudes in like fucking like wide horizontal striped t-shirts with like the like the 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 collar poking out over the uh, like over shirt uh wearing like loose fitting jeans and just going like (laughs) you know just that that's all that that entire era of music was for a while yeah and it was based (laughs) Yeah, it was based. Yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's What would you even call that genre of music? Like um, The genre that was killed by party rockin'. Because, <laughs> like, LMFAO took all those fucking nerds and sent them back to Guitar Center. I mean, when you think about it, kind of. Because LMFAO was kind of the start of the whole, like, uh, you know, techno revival. But for jocks, yeah. But for jocks, for party, yeah. for party animals, yeah. For guys like Ivan and his best friend Joe Burrow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Should I, I should I bring up your best friend, uh, Pan Pizza? Um, yeah. Or uh, Mr. Enter. Uh, yeah, I'm best friends with Mr. Enter. Yeah. I'm also best friends with Linkara. Who the fuck is Linkara? Like, I know you reference him a lot, but I, I genuinely don't know who that is. You don't know who Linkara is. Genuinely no idea. The, the the comic book guy in the in the fedora. That does not narrow it down. You... <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. What? Why are you so stupid? Why are you so stupid, girl? Why are you so stupid? No, but who the fuck is Linkara? You don't... The Lightbringer? Huh? The, the, he was the comic book guy on that guy with the glasses. Uh, doesn't ring. Oh wait, you're I've such, seen his face before. You're such a jock. 
Oh my god. I've seen his face before, okay? Never mind. Yeah. Don't you have a boner now? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I have to go ejaculate. <laughs> wow, this is the worst episode we've ever done. I think this is the fifth episode now that you've called the worst episode we've ever done. But can you blame me? Can we get a counter? Like, can someone count this up? Like, how, how many times Synthcool says, this is the worst fucking episode we've ever done? If someone made, like, a bingo of this, I think, like, Joe Burrow, worst episode ever, would be on there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we we're, uh, we're getting real close to a bingo here for a, a mediocre episode of <laughs> Zoomer Tombs. So. You know, it doesn't have to be mediocre, okay? L- I have a really good topic. That All right. Fucking, that that jock kid in this movie. All right. His face was pissing me off. Something about that kid's <laughs> face just pissed me off. <laughs> why? Why was his face pissing you off? Just like, I don't know. It's like if you rolled every American Pie character into one face, like it would have been that motherfucker's face, that like Jason character's face. Who the fuck even was this? Uh, he he was. Uh... Who the hell was he? Who did he? Uh, what was the character's name? Like Jason. Jason. Uh, I'm trying to see about the cast to see who the fuck that guy is right now. Because I I always had like the assumption that wait. D- don't you write notes during these? You should be more professional and know who I'm talking about. Look, the notes that I wrote for this movie were very rudimentary. <laughs> I can't even find the guy. All right, all right, all right. I think it was. Uh, I think his name was Aaron. No, his name was Jason in the movie. No, no, yeah, because he was played by Jonathan Bennett. He looks just like yeah. That this is him. Yeah, he looks like a like a very generic like mixture between like um, God, I want to say Zac Efron, but with a slightly douchier build. <laughs> oh man, we're. We have no idea what we're talking about, so we're just shitting on some random like dude's face. He was also from Ohio. Oh my god, Ohio! I hate Ohio. And then he moved to New York. Oh my god, I hate New York. He was in Van Wilder, uh, freshman year. Oh boy. Oh, uh, dude, Van Wilder, freshman year. Yeah, he was in Van Wilder freshman year, dude. Oh, dude, Van Wilder freshman year? Van Wilder freshman year, baby oh, motherfucker, Van yeah. Van, Van Wilder. Wilder freshman year. Yeah, woo, woo, woo! Woo, woo! I love college! I love beer and fucking... It's another beer fucking college movie. Oh, dude, you fuck at college? Oh, dude, what? What? <laughs> Boobies? Dude, they fucking they have sex in college. Uh, they're fucking shooting DNA everywhere, bro. They just right. fucking nothing. They're nothing in college. Yeah, dude. Party, baby. Oh, dude, he got his girl pregnant in college. Get out the hanger. Get out the <laughs> stairs. What? Time to start taking mugwort or whatever the <laughs> fuck it is. Shit out that baby in the in the in the mod bathroom in the dorm. Go into the girls' bathroom. Hey, what's this red streak? Oh, it's just my kid owned. <laughs> party, party, <laughs> party fell. <laughs> Dude, you just broke the bro code. I was supposed to roofie that girl, bro. Bro, oh my god, that's a party foul. Guess I better clean up after the party's over, or else my fraternity bros are gonna haze me with a paddle. (laughs) They're gonna stick a golf club in my anus. (laughs) Damn, dude. Band they're they're gonna slingshot a golf ball into my eyeballs, fuck my <laughs> girlfriend, and kill my cat. They're gonna grab a knife and execute my parents. Whoa! Uh, looks like you should have read the fraternity rules when you signed up, bro. That'll be two thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this uh, this new Van Wilder reboot is pretty dark. Oh, it's dark. Yeah. It's pretty Donnie Darko, if you ask. Uh, 
Oh, man. Let, 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 let me read the description of it. Ben Wilder starts his freshman year at Coolidge College. Wow, say that ten times fast. Coolidge, and embark- college, Coolidge 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 College. You're slurring. College. You're slurring. See, see how fucking easy it is, guys? Ah, uh, fuck off. Van Wilder starts his freshman year at Coolidge College and embarks on an adventure to land the campus hottie and liberate his school from sexual oppression and party dysfunction. Whoa, bro. Looks like the man is going to keep us from partying. Damn Turns out at this learning institution, we got to learn. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe Dean McStuffington is like forcing me to not like not flash girls on campus. What What is this sexual oppression? Dude, I can't believe uh, my professor, uh, Big Pants Dorkington, is uh, not allowing me to just fuck Trisha from Algebra on the top of this desk right in front of everyone. Dude, Principal McEvil Fart Stinkerton is not allowing me to roofie girls? Say what? That's against the bro code, bro. Um, That's not cool. He's not a wingman, bro. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's like a scene where Dean McStuffington gets replaced by Dean Chuck Norris. Yeah, and then it becomes a cool school where <laughs> where the dudes can roofie girls and the girls can wake up in different places every day. Yeah. <laughs> Let, less algebra, more farting. <laughs> less English and biology and more farting. Fucking and sucking. Eighty-five <laughs> percent of the budget goes to our football team, and then the remaining fifteen percent goes to fucking and sucking class. Zero percent goes to the math leads. Boo! Boo! Take that, you fucking nerds. Poindexter makes suspender pants. More like, we need to get you laid, bro. <laughs> Drink this beer, bro. I got a keg, bro. We're butt-chugging Bud Light for the troops, but not Bud Light because that beer is woke. We're butt-chugging Buttweiser because we like butt-fucking, butt-sucking, and butt-chugging Buttweiser. <laughs> Yeah, okay. bro. It went out my nose, bro. I got shit coming out my mouth, bro. <laughs> Van Wilder, freshman year. Woo! I mean, we, we we shit on this Van Wilder freshman year movie we never seen. <laughs> we haven't even watched we, it. Yeah, we haven't watched it. We're making up ideas for it, but I'm telling you this with a straight face. This is yeah. unironically American Pie Beta House. This, this movie <laughs> we're making up is unironically. You, you you have to watch that movie because it's every even 2000s seen it. douchebag trope in a movie. Oh, my God. I, I love how this was initially a Mean Girls thing, and now it's just going on to fucking American Pie Beta House. I fucking hate college movies that are like that. I really do, because that's, I mean, not, that's not how college is at all. I mean, this does kind of go back to uh, Mean Girls because Mean Girls is like a much better 2000s like comedy movie than all those douchebag films. Because like, you know, because even as as paper thin as the moral is, it's still like a a nice movie and no one's really getting like abused in like, like, I guess a way in those college movies thinks is funny. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty wholesome movie. In my opinion, you know, she becomes friends with the mathletes. She, uh, you know, fucking becomes better friends with her other friends. I, I'm, I mean, it's not very mean spirited at all. I mean, a lot of those like two thousands movies, um, over time, just kind of got the idea of if we're just mean all the time, then that's funny. I mean, some sometimes mean humor is funny. It's just those college movies like don't have it in in like a satirical way or anything yeah no like those college movies like it, it'll have like a romantic subplot or whatever uh, but it'll it'll usually act as like an instrument for the main character to kind of like w- uh, live out his like power fantasy in some way uh but for the most part it's all just like yeah dude fuck nerds <laughs> you know you get a fucking butt chug 
or it's like no bro like the the conflict is like oh no they took our keg bro now we can't party this is uncool now it's time to commit a war <clears throat> crime now it's time to get into hijinks throughout the whole campus that'll fucking like cause a civil race war <laughs> between all the different groups on campus yeah bro they took away our freedom to party just I don't get that whole lifestyle. And I guess it's because I haven't lived anything close to that lifestyle. But it just, like, people uh, created this whole, like, kind of cultural identity around just being a uh, a sloppy, disgusting, drunk, like, uh, woman, like, whoremonger. <laughs> you know? And it's like, yeah, bro, college was awesome. Good times. And it's like, did you graduate? No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we spent uh, we spent like twenty percent of this review talking about something awful forums. Another twenty succession, twenty uh, percent uh, college movies, twenty percent mm -hmm. probably Van Wilder itself, and then 20 oh yeah, Mean Girls. Yeah. So uh, yeah, anything else you want to say about the movie? I I, I really liked it. Um, I think uh, the girl who played Janice, uh, Lizzie Kaplan, I, I is her name. Uh, she, I I've, I've seen her in a lot of stuff. I really really like her actress. Um, she was in Party Down. She's been in a couple of shows. Uh, she was in some movie with uh, Kirsten Dunst about uh, like, um, like a it was like Bridesmaid before Bridesmaid came out. I thought that movie was funny. Mm -hmm. um, she did the voice in Inside Out. Or, no, Inside Job, uh, that Netflix cartoon. Really? Who, uh, which character did she, uh, did she play? Uh, Janice. Janice. Yeah, kind of like uh, the the alternative girl. Oh well, I mean, like, I mean, in inside or in uh, inside job. Oh, inside job, uh, the main chick. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, this movie had a really uh, good cast, and uh, you even had the original voice for <laughs> Meg Griffin in there. Really? Yeah, Lacey Chaplin. Uh, she played. Uh, she played. Uh, I forgot her name in this movie. It was like one of the plastics, the one who was like rich, the uh, the toaster strudel girl. Oh yeah, the. One of the two dumb ones. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And then you had Amanda Seyfeld in there, who uh, you know, has a pretty uh good career in uh in a lot of stuff lately. She's uh she played Elizabeth Holmes. Really? That, yeah. That, that's a really good casting, uh, I think, because uh, they both kind of have uh like the psycho blue eyes. Oh, are you anti Aryan, Ivan? Uh, look, man, some people with blue eyes just be fucking staring at you, dude. Yeah, is there anything else we should, like, say? I mean, I, I guess not. I mean, we kind of went through the whole uh, rigmarole of it. Uh, what else, What more is there to say about Mean Girls? I mean, I think it's a, a nice, solid 8 out of 10 movie. Yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. Wow, you fucking one-up me, huh, cunt? Yeah, bitch, I'm fucking dabbing on you. What are you going to do? Tell oh, yeah? Well, I give it an 8.5.1, motherfucker. Uh, yeah, well, how about I come to your fucking home and, um, 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 punch you? Uh, sorry, Claymore. <laughs> uh, you just got hit by a Claymore mine on my porch. You're dead. Um, my dad, is, my dad works for, um, uh, Nintendo, so he'll fucking, like, airstrike your house. Nuh uh I have a force field. Um, I have superpowers. I, I could just, you know, come to your house and just throw it into the sun. Um, I'm actually Jesus's brother, uh, long estranged. I have God powers. I'm God. Well, I'm actually Pontius Pilate's uh brother, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll just crucify you. <laughs> Uh, well, you forgot to mention, I, you forgot to, to notice, rather, that I am wearing body armor. I'm wearing a stab-proof jacket. Take that, Pontius pussy. Um, freeze frame. Yeah, gotcha. I fr freeze frame. While, while you're frozen, I'm gonna, like, um, jizz in your Cheerios. Uh, unfortunately for you, I have learned the, uh, the, the master stand power Zawarudo, and I have now mastered the ability to traverse the frozen time, and I'm gonna fucking smack your nuts.
I am glad this is a free episode because if so, if I paid for an episode, <laughs> like this, I would be so mad, dude. Every mouth breathing motherfucker who watches this is gonna be like, "Is this what their paid episodes are like? All of the Patreon patrons are shills, bro. They're not even real patrons, bro. This this podcast stinks." <laughs> Yeah, God bless our 14 patriots. They're saints, truly yeah. are. They uh, they keep this show rolling. Yeah, they're the, they're the real soldiers for Memorial Day, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, bless those troops. Wait, does, does no Memorial one Day imply that they're dead? Uh, yes, but oh, okay, okay. You forget no. to mention that they are our expert tumors. They're in their in the Zoomer Tombstone graveyard, so to speak. They are dead, but they're dead with us. They're stuck here forever. Zoomers are probably not going to get tombstones in the future. There'll, there'll be no space. Uh, Too expensive, probably. Yeah. They're probably going to get, like, a jar. <laughs> that is the most <laughs> fitting way for a Zoomer funeral, just a fucking jizz jar. <laughs> Put my ashes in the My Little Pony jar. <laughs> I want to be buried with Rainbow Dash. Oh man, then then put send it to like iDubs for an unboxing video. God. <laughs> yeah. Remember when you did those? That was pretty fun, wasn't it? iDubs, why can't you be like cool and do prank calls and say the N word anymore? You sold out, man. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me man we are we are really okay going, let's... going into the uh capping off the the idub statement though i no, i just want to no, i'm gonna no i'm airing out my, no no i'm airing out my opinion this is a this is a mr meatball opinion all right no! i think he beat himself up a bit too much in the apology and he probably shouldn't have done that yeah like uh, okay okay idubs even at his edgiest, like if you're smart enough, you could read people. Like iDubs, <laughs> his content was edgy, but ideologically, it wasn't really promoting anything far right. Yeah, he just yeah. happened to have a crowd that was just full of dumbass teenagers that were just like, "Whoa, he said the word." <laughs> yeah, like you could like with Sam Hyde. I mean, as say what you will about Sam Hyde, you could. Back then, even with his old stuff, you could read him ideologically as a right wing guy, not not I dubs. So, you know, he shouldn't beat himself too hard. But I but yeah. I will say him saying the N word in in sort of like a very vague libertarian style, that's not really a big problem. But him saying the N word at that next to that girl, I, I always felt that was very uncalled for. And I'm glad he apologized for that. I mean, I, I always thought it was kind of like a like an act of justice because she was being racist. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, the Tana Mongu or whatever, she um she would like liberally use the N-word and uh then also like rail against its usage in other contexts. But was she actually like racist towards black people besides using the word in sort of like a like a Chris Rock Louis C. K. manner? It wasn't really in a Chris Rock Louis C.K. manner. It's more in like a, like a like a ratty fucking like urban New Yorker white girl manner, where she's just like, he kind of thinks it's okay to use. No, okay, but did she like ideologically like have a stance that was like racist, or was she just kind of cringe and annoying? It's been like seven years since I've seen that video, so I can't really tell you for sure. Uh, but from what I remember. She was being kind of a cunt. So it was a little bit justified to kind of prank her during a meetup. Although, eh. although, although, eh. it is a little cringe. But at the time, it was fucking, it was wild. Like, in hindsight, if you walked up to, like, a celebrity and did that to them, even just to humiliate them for being a shithead, uh, that's, like, like, kind of a low blow. But back yeah. then, that was kind of his whole deal was, like, you know, he was going to show these people up in a way that was kind of, like, you know, a low blow to them to show them that they ain't shit. Like, I remember during the uh, the Leafy content cop, he, like, 
he like went out to the streets of like Los Angeles or some shit and like told people to like pin the chin on the leafy or some or something. Dude, that the leafy response video leafy made after that content comp was probably the cringiest thing because leafy like tries to act so badass walking being like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Have you seen what he's been doing recently? Um, yeah, don't even fucking acknowledge he's such a fucking washout attention whore. Yeah, yeah. It, like it just... Joe, Joe Biden is worse than Hitler. It's like, you know, like you could tell what he's fucking doing. Yeah, he, it's, a, it's a big grift. I mean, he made a Twitter post that said, I do not support transgenders and then released a a video about how he doesn't like trans people. It's just every washed out, like weirdo that like gets internet fame or any kind of fame at all. And then just falls off immediately goes to the, like being a transphobe line, like EDP four, four, five even started doing that after he got outed as a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly he's like, we got to protect the children. And it's like, um, uh, okay bud yeah it's like jared fogel gonna fucking stop pedophilia <laughs> yeah it just it doesn't make any sense but at the, at the end of the day these people are just clawing for attention they know that makes people's eyes pop and it you know it, it, it puts their their uh their views it makes their view counts higher yep. uh unfortunately for all of you viewers today uh zoomer tombstone has credibility and integrity we do not, at least I do not, uh, hate trans people for attention. How about you, Synth? What, what do you think? I mean, I could understand why, like, maybe some people could be, like, confused about transgender people. But I think anyone who, like, promotes violence or any, like, actual harm on them is a piece of shit. Couldn't have said it better. You know, like, I mean, like, if you're, like, a 40-year-old guy and you're, like, I, I, I just don't understand any of these terms right i don't think you're like a bad person like even right. just even if you're like mildly weirded out i guess i don't but think the, you're inherently evil but if, if you're like willing to fucking like send death threats or make fun of like trans suicide you are lower than shit yeah and then you get those people that are like uh like ron DeSantis for president unlimited genocide on trans people yeah it's like you know it's yeah. like like, look, why, why don't you, like, worry more about fucking, like, the, the fucking air that's going to be turned into, like, deadly gas <laughs> yeah. or, like, the water, like, fucking sinking your state before you just about a random person's identity. Yeah, it's like, you know, you get these fucking, like, uh, these dumbass, like, deranged conservative t types uh, that are just, like, trans people are ruining this country, even though, like, uh, our water rights are being sold to private companies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, they they don't even fucking bat an eye. It's like, oh yeah, there's fucking like worms and shit in my water. Um, base, <laughs> um, base. We need to deregulate. Actually, we need to make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap this shit up. All righty, make a uh, new request. <laughs> That's the state of the world. Um, um, yeah, so Mean Girls, like what? Eight, eight out of ten movie, funny as fuck. Yeah, eight out of ten movie, pretty funny. Uh. Succession ending, I give it like a seven. I give it a seven. Shut the fuck up. It was a nine. I mean, the overall series is enamoring. I mean, I love the entire series of Succession. The ending, however, uh, left a bit more to be desired. Can't, what, did you want the con heads to, like, storm the Capitol? I mean, they, they actually set up, like, the whole protest thing. And I was hoping they would, like, go more into that. And have like the uh, like the meeting or something be interrupted by like protesters, uh, kind of in a way that's like similar to uh, that one scene from like Mr. Robot, where like the entire corporate office is being like raided by protesters. Yeah, but Succession and Mr. Robot, they're different beasts. Succession is not an optimistic show. It's not really set up to have like a conclusion like that. It's just Succession is a very uh work a day world type of show it's just I, I like when it comes to arcs or whatever it's it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be conclusive or have any like if, if the if the end of the show was like oh yeah like jared menken uh resigned for being corrupt or whatever and 
the the Roy family realized their conservative machine did so much damage and they they fucking sold it off to uh, progressives. I mean, like, yes, morally, that would be the happy ending. But to me, succession is supposed to be this depressing. It, it's it's supposed to be nihilistic. Whatever happened to Lawrence Yi eating them all to death or whatever he said? <clears throat> the uh, the Volter guy. Oh, that that Silicon Tech bro got um you know they name dropped him a few times in the finale and I thought he was going to just show up and be like, "Hey there boys, I'm going to buy this whole shit out or something." Um, or I'm going to fuck it up, but no, it was it was Shiv. They uh I mean maybe they should have gotten the uh the kid who uh, played with the baseball in like the first episode. I, I don't even remember that. The the kid who uh, Roman like offered like a million dollars to if he got a home run in the first episode. Oh, he, he I remember should, now. He should have showed up. Yeah, what well, what what would he do? Just like take over. <laughs> take over. <laughs> yeah, he was the true successor. Yeah. All right, let's let let us let us get out of here. I'm fucking hungry. Alrighty. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more of the uh, Zoomer Tombstone podcast, uh, we have far better episodes on our Patreon. Uh, we have an official website up now, zoomertombstone.com. There you can see all of our shit. Uh, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, a bunch of others. But yeah, uh, go there. Uh, go to our Patreon if you like it. If you like, um, feel it. free to share this with your buddies. Do it. Fucking do it. Just do it. Just just fucking share it. Go to the Patreon. Fuck you. you if you listen to yeah. all the shit, you 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 have no standards. You're lower than dog shit. You might as well accept <laughs> the uh, depressing dinner you're gonna eat. Yeah, eat your sad TV dinner in front of your TV, listening to the Zoomer Tombstone podcast. Yeah. It's and make like, sure to press all the fucking interaction buttons. All of them. If you don't, I'm gonna die. Alright? My heart is linked to the analytics of this show. <laughs> if you don't press all the buttons, I'm going to fucking pass out and die. Could, I need you to smash the fucking like button. I need you to press the subscribe button. I need you to press the share button. Share it to Facebook. Tell your dumbass grandparents about this show. Maybe they'll watch us. Yeah, we'll fucking chill like uh boner pills and like nascar like merchandise you hear that nascar you hear that pharmaceutical companies we will shill for you send us all inquiries uh to our contact page on our website thank you uh anything else you want to say um... boner uh boner <laughs>